All right, can everyone hear me okay? Good in the back, Mr. Cotter? Yep, everyone hear me? I can hear me. That's good. All right, 10 o'clock, let's get started. Good morning. 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 Yeah. If you were here earlier, I got, got that out of my system. All right, welcome to Breaking Down Scrum Values with Martial Arts, and more specifically, Taekwondo. So first we'd like to start off with uh, a brief warm up. So Mr. Cotter. Okay. So if I'd like all you boys and girls to please get up on your feet. <clears throat> One of the things we um, have to teach in martial arts, believe it or not, is to breathe. And we have a lot of kids and they're like getting all tensed up and we've got to tell them you've got to breathe. So just have your, just take a very rack stance and just Put your hands upwards, inhale, and exhale, inhale, and exhale. Just stretch slightly to your right. Oh, I wish I had a camera for this. <laughs> stretch okay, slightly to on. your left. With me. Oh, I feel like we should do the Macarena now. Back up the top. Give yourself a bit of a wiggle. That's the way. And down on your seats, please. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Got the blood moving. All right. So uh, I work for American Electric Power, and we take safety. It's a high priority for us. So um, I wanted to give a safety moment. We, we typically do this at the beginning of every meeting that we have. So um, first safety moment. Always check the porta potty to make sure that it's solid on the ground. <laughs> Good? Okay, I did this as a joke, however, however, last weekend I was at a baseball tournament and some, it was very windy and someone actually left the porta potty and it moved because of the wind. So uh, I did put this as a joke, but then I actually saw it happen. So um, just keep, just be careful, porta potties, because you don't want that to happen. Okay. And the other safety moment, <laughs> the internet's amazing. You can find whatever on the internet. Uh, I don't know what to say other than just don't do this, okay? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so uh, today we're gonna talk about the, the five scrum values um, and view it through the martial arts lens and then also what you can do with your teams or the impact that the values have on your teams. Um, I was asked, what are you passionate about? And uh, it took me a little while to figure it out, but look, working with teams, I realized that the scrum values are, I don't know, they're being overlooked or not really embodied or lived by. And uh, that's kind of how Russell and I came up with uh, this presentation. So real quick, I'd like you to take a look at the five values and Think, think about a time where maybe you, you specifically or someone on your team, you noticed, where the, one of the values could have been done a little bit differently or a little bit better. So just take a moment, think about it if you want to write it down, or uh, just think about maybe where you could have done one of these roles or one of these values a little bit differently. Lots of thinking going on, lots of mindfulness. You guys here. look very thoughtful right now. Okay. So about me, <clears throat> I'm Rob Reed, and I, I work at AEP, and I am a second degree black belt. I've been doing it for about five years. Uh, I also teach the yellow, or I'm sorry, the red stripe. Uh, I'm a trainee instructor. I've been tra uh, training for, for uh, instructing for a few years, and. Um, Really enjoy that. My two boys, you'll see them a little bit further along in the presentation. They both went through black belt with me. So I thought it was really cool. I, I was sitting there and watching them do it. And I'm like, I'm just sitting here. And I have to be here every time. So then we just did it together. Um, it was awesome. Uh, I was a Boy Scout leader for about seven years. I'm disappointed that no longer. Uh, they, they don't want to do that anymore. But love the program. And most recently, last couple of years, I bought a Jeep. Who owns a Jeep Wrangler? One person, yes, two or two, <laughs> few, three. All right, we can talk about it after. But um, my wife thinks I'm crazy, buy a brand new vehicle and go drive up waterfalls and 
Two years ago, I went through a mud pit. I'm still cleaning mud off of it in places I didn't know mud could go. Um, and I also do some, some Agile and Scrum stuff. <laughs> uh, I, I'm an Agile coach at AEP. I was a Scrum master for uh, many year, a few years and then uh, working as a coach. So this is me. Uh, I'm Russell Cotter. I actually work for JP Morgan Chase. Um, so I uh, actually work as an enterprise business architect, uh, but a lot of my work does intersect with the Agile community. Uh, so we have to have those sessions where we are tying together the interest and strategies of business with IT. Um, let's see, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm from Australia, obviously. Um, I spent a lot of time in my background doing uh, systems and network engineering, uh, all layers of the OSI stack. Um, in fact, in Australia, I, we keep our OSI stack in the outback and I climb up and down it like that. That's crazy. And uh, used to be in the Australian Army for a while. I do other speaking engagements on architecture and technology strategy and, as it were today, agile. So I'm pleased to be here. Thank you for coming. Um, we hope to make this very interactive uh, presentation, not just two, two guys at the podium. Uh, so come prepared for some high-flying uh, things that are going to happen. Um, and I've got two kids. My, my kids are also martial arts. I'm a second degree black belt, uh, certified instructor. Um, my son, my daughter's actually a first degree black belt. Um, I learned the hard way not to mess with her in sparring. She took out my uh, tendon in my right arm for three months after just one kick. So I'm not to mess with her and she's only 17. Uh, but uh, but uh, embarrassing, but also kind of good in a way. Um, so thank you. Um, so we'll get on with it, I think. All right. So before we start with Scrum values, it, it's really the, the base of how this works, why the Scrum values are so important, is uh, the three pillars and empiricism. So transparency, just everything out there and known. Everyone knows what's happening as much as possible. That, that's key for the Scrum values to work. Inspection, always be there to review the product, the way that you do the work, the teamwork um, that needs to be there. And then uh, you, you've heard it, I've heard it in many of the sessions uh, yesterday, the adaptation, the continuous improvement, always trying to do better, always trying to learn from your mistakes, make adjustments and continue to move forward. The value, the scrum values are all based on that. And then finally, the empiricism, what, is, what actually occurred, not what you think is going to or, or plan with the, the basis of thinking of what may happen, using what actually did happen and using that to plan. Um, that, that's key, and I, that's missing sometimes. So anyways, we need to have the base set. So when we talk about the Agile uh, Scrum values in a minute, um, it's also good to know what do we want to do with these values. Um, so we really need to seek to improve ourselves, improve our teams, improve our business. So that really has to have a learning aspect. Um, I consider myself a lifelong learner. Um, I don't ever consider that I've learned enough or learned it to the end. So I think we should need to consider that. Um, and also practice what you learn and practice it in a way that's con um, that you can continue it and you can sustain it. If you try to overachieve, um, sometimes those sort of things uh, wither away. So if you can get it into a habit, and I think there's a saying that um, you have to do something for like a four weeks or a month to make it a habit. Um, so continue to do that and also make sure that the folks around you are also trying to instill those practices and behaviours that make it a habit. So if you're doing routines for yourself and routines within your teams, try to sort of teamify that whole uh, habitual routine. And then ultimately things can, can become a way of life. Um, if I look at martial arts as an example, I started off by just wanting to learn something new because my son was going to go in it. Um, I started to practice it because I thought, well, it's now having some effect on my health in a, in a positive way. Um, by the time I got to blue belt, which is about the halfway mark, up to black belt, it started becoming a habit in that I was always lowering my stress and improving my focus, and that was a good life habit. And then I decided when I was getting towards black belt that I love it so much that I may actually become an instructor, make it a way of life, not just a thing that I do as part of a, a general routine. So I think with Scrum, I think with the values, if we could try to instill those sorts of ways of looking and applying Scrum values, that would be very helpful. And I think of this. I think of the scrum values as do it at work, but also it, it's a way of life, really. 
if, if you live these, va these values work at home also, as well as at work. So, all right. So one of the things that I, I um, did as an exercise myself was I wanted to see where martial arts philosophy intersects with the sort of things we hear about in, in Agile. And we talk about Agile delivery, we've got sprints, we've got epics and roles and all the terminology. Um, and in martial arts, we do things. We have balance. Um, everything in martial arts is balanced between left and right, mind and body, um, upper body techniques, lower body techniques. We, all, we have to learn them all the time. And carters and self-defense and all those sort of things. But at the center here, we have all these other things like discipline. We have ceremonies on Agile. We have techniques. We have growth, refinement. And at the center of the center is these five values, which is the core of today's presentation. Focus, openness, courage, commitment, and respect. And I actually love it that courage is at the center of that, because I think it is very much easier for me at the center of how we look at values. He's trying to give up stuff for the future <laughs> later on. Nice save. <clears throat> OK, so let's get into the first, the first value. Who has seen Karate Kid? All right. Uh, we don't use it throughout the whole thing. But focus, the first, the first value. You know, giving focus on a task, it, it really improves the ability for you to complete it. And er, this morning's uh, opening keynote talked about focus, and I was, I was writing some notes there. But um, really with focus, there's a lot of things being thrown at you. And if you can't focus on one item, one item, it's not going to get. You're not going to have a better uh, chance of success. So, focus helps decide what the most important thing is that you're working on. And the product vision with agility, having uh, the Scrum teams, having your product vision, and the sprint goal is really where I think of focus. Everything that you're doing should be related to completing that sprint goal. So that's, that's how I see it as focus. So with martial arts, um, this is actually uh, both of my boys. And uh, they're doing an isometric move. Anyone know what isometric move is? A couple? Um, it's, a, it's like a tension move. And I'm going to come over here. And uh, it's like a five second where you tense up and you, this is a punch, five second punch. And it takes a lot of focus to do that in front of an audience. Um, and also, they do in front of their peers, as well as uh, the judges when they're doing their testing in front of the parents. Um, but it's the focus of this move that uh, I wanted to highlight with the martial arts. So this is where audience participation comes into play. I need three, three people? Yeah, three. Three people that may be a little bit loud, crazy, or noisy. I, I, so if you point at someone else, that means you should come up. <laughs> uh huh. <clears throat> I need three people. We need three people who are going to be. I know, be like a, a twenty-five of you in the room. All right, we got one. You, you actually aren't going to have to do the martial art. I just need someone loud, loud or noisy, crazy. All right. Here we go. What about this? O H. <laughs> All right, we're getting there. All right, three people. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Okay, that's good. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to show um, how we work on focus, and we actually do this to our to each other and our students, uh, ranging from three years up, three three year olds and up. So what I want you guys to do is try to distract us. We're going to do a little bit of our form, mm -hmm. and I need you guys to yell, get in our faces, whatever just you want to do. Around. Okay. Yeah. Same with you. I need some. I need some noise here. Try to distract us, okay? All right. Ready? Yep. Do. All right. Ready? Yep. Okay. Go. Get down. Get down. Run! 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 All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you. So, like I said, we actually do that with our students. We throw pads at them and. Uh, it really, to learn the form, it takes focus. And you can do it easy on your own. But then we, we start trying to distract them. Um, it really makes it more difficult. And there's another technique I, I use. So some of the, some of the students, the, the juniors, um, they can't get a form right. And they're not really focusing because they have the distractions of all the things 
that they have. They've got the parents on their iPhones. Why aren't you watching me? You know, and they're watching the other kids. And it's amazing yeah. that when I say, close your eyes and do those last five moves, it blows them away. They get the five moves done because nothing is distracting them visually and orally they can still hear things. But it's amazing. So you can try that. I think try to think about things of how techniques can help you adjust the focus. I think the talk today was very good about that too. Okay. So uh, I want to tell a story. How does this relate back to your scrum teams? Um, I start, we started a mobbing exercise at work. And uh, the very first session, we're in, the, we're in this session, and uh, we said, okay, we're going to all work today in this one room together to work on, on our work. And it took 15 minutes for the team to clear their calendars of the work that wasn't specific to or the meetings that were not specific to the sprint goal. And I, I have shivers thinking about it. Like, really? 15 minutes it takes you guys to figure out to clear your calendars to have focus on the task. And I just, I realized that that may be part of why they may not be getting all their work done or getting the sprint goals done. So it was an eye opener. So focus on the sprint goal to help get your work done. All right, so for your teams, what are their distractions? What are they being distracted doing? Not getting their, why are they not getting their work done? What other distractions do they have? And what do you think they could do if they didn't have any distractions? What's that? Yeah. Maybe they'll get, get it done, get it done better, faster. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is me. Openness, <laughs> all right. So um, the more I learn, the more I realize how much stuff I have to learn. It goes back to my lifelong learner um, sort of philosophy. How we listen and give consideration to new ideas. Um, so again, starting with martial arts, and I'll come over to Agile, um, you have to be open to things. Now, one of the things I do see a lot of, um, when little kids are testing for board breaking, these are solid boards. These are not boards you can bend or you can't do over your knee. Solid boards. And one of the things you see is they come up to break the board and they, and they, they make contact with the board, right? And they don't break the board. Right? They don't break it. Now that hurts because all the energy that you're transferring from your body to the wood is stopping and rebounding into your body. It hurts. They have to be open to what Mr. Cotter tells them. And I say, if you go faster, it's gonna, you're going to think that it's going to hurt more by going faster. But the trick of it is, if you go through the board, that energy goes with it and that pain doesn't come back. They have to be open to accepting a concept like that. And for kids, that's hard. To think that the thing that was hard and made it hurt, you want me to go faster? Isn't that going to be more painful? So I think that's a good example. And I think in, um, and, and, and back to Agile, right? We, uh, I've seen a lot of organizations that are in various stages of transformation, and you have to be open. And what I've seen myself is that executives and team managers and team players have done a lot of things that are very siloed and phased and waterfally, right? And it's not that those things are terrible, but to get them to be open to the new ways of doing and being agile is a huge leap of faith for a lot of people. Huge leap of faith. It's not easy. In fact, I would even go as far as saying that um, some of the things that we teach in Agile and the things we do in Agile are very culturally um, challenging. So you have to be open to the fact that you're going to be transparent, you're going to be very honest with each other um, and show that you have openness to new ideas and openness to things like making mistakes. So in this slide here, we have a, one of our master instructors, Master Mary McNitt, and she's having a talk with one of Rob's sons here. I'll let you take this yep. one. Uh, Brandon, uh, he wasn't uh, breaking his board properly. He was, having a, he was struggling with the, the, te the technique. And it does take speed and power and strength, but the technique is most important. If you don't do good technique, you can hurt yourself. So she was giving him um, 
some instruction on how to do it better. And he, was, he has to be open, all the students have to be open to receive the feedback and make adjustments accordingly. So what we're gonna do for, for openness is we're gonna demonstrate Mr. Cotter, he has an amazing sidekick. Um, so we're gonna demonstrate some openness here. So okay. if you can go ahead, or, or is there anyone wanna come up and do this with us? It worked so well the first time. Okay. So, um, so if you could uh, do a sidekick, which is uh, the hard, one of the hardest kicks that we do here. Yeah, so I'll just do a, that's a sidekick, All right? So, okay. Uh, sidekick? Okay. Okay, Mr. Cotter, that was pretty good sidekick. I thought, it, I thought it was awesome. It was actually horrible. It was a horrible <laughs> sidekick. Now, that's kind of funny, but we, we may do that sometimes with our teams, if you think about it. You know, you don't want to give that harsh feedback. You want to give open, constructive feedback. So, instead of saying it was horrible. Um, so, Mr. Cotter, that, that, was, that was a pretty good kick. Um, okay. You want to try to get it at least belt high, if you can. And uh, also, you want to make sure you, you bring up your... <laughs> <laughs> you don't do that. Uh, you bring up <laughs> your knee up to, towards your belly button first, and then extend your kick. Nice. Very good job. Good job. So just give constructive, positive feedback and not fall at the same time. Um, so, thank you. Especially don't fall. That's you, Mr. Carter. Yeah, so feedback, as, as uh, Mr. Reed said, um, open and closed mindedness. I think we have to be very careful with that. A lot of the things I, I'm seeing in Agile, and I'm relatively an Agile newbie in Chase. I've done some more other Agile stuff in Bank of America. But what I'm saying is a lot of these things are not just Agile things. These are things that are life things. Um, the more open-minded you are in life, the more open-minded um, the, the more open you are to receiving new ideas and, and getting good feedback because that's how we grow. Closed-minded, um, not so good. So you have to consider, are you open, really open to giving and receiving feedback? And not just at work, but when you're at home. Um, one of the things that I'm kind of proud of as a father, I'm a father of two, and I always make my kids comfortable in giving me feedback. And it's not like I say, give me feedback. But I would ask them, what do you think about that idea? Make them comfortable in giving their opinion. I may not always agree with it, and I'll tell them that, but at least have the discussion. And I did tell my kids, um, when they were very young, um, I like to think strategically, so when they were eight and nine years old, I sat them down on the porch one day, and I said, we're going to have a talk, and I want you to be very open, you're going to have a talk about being a teenager. And my nine-year-old daughter goes, oh my God, this is going to be gross. <laughs> No, no, it's not that kind of a talk. My son's, my son's like... So I said, I want to talk to you about when you become a teenager, things are going to happen. And I'm not talking about physiological things. I'm thinking about how relationships work. There are going to be things that mummy and daddy are going to say to you that don't make sense to you. Or you don't like the sound of it. Or it might make you feel a bit grumpy. I said... The thing is, this is normal. I really want you to understand this is normal as to what's going to happen when you're a teenager. And they're still a little bit confused about where is he going with this. I said, well, so where I'm going with it is that we have to be open with each other and honest and communicate. And my daughter says, well, why are you telling us now? I said, because we're going to have these conversations year over year to make sure that we understand this is where it's headed. Now, I reaped the benefits of this. Um, several years later, and I remember exactly where it happened. Uh, we were playing miniature golf. And my daughter has this thing, when we were playing miniature golf together, if she's not hitting the ball very well, she kind of checks out. And when she checks out, she gets bored. When she gets bored, she plays up. And I go, okay, we need to have a little talk. And she rolls her eyes, because she's 15, that's what 15-year-old daughters do, right? And I go, we need to all have fun here, for your brother, for me, for you. And she starts arguing. I said, okay, we've arrived. <laughs> we've arrived at teenagerdom. Okay, so remember what I said. I said, think of this activity as something that we're all doing together. It's family oriented and it's good and it should be fun. 
So just be open. It doesn't matter who wins. It doesn't matter if you get the balls and the holes. It doesn't matter. But please, be open to the idea of having fun. And, and she does this thing where she'll just sit there, stand there silently, and then she looked at me and said, OK, this is fine. And I thought, oh, job done, fantastic. Now, that wasn't the only time it happened. It happened several times after that, but I think it was good to have the, the, the presence and the thought of what it means to be open out in the open, and we were doing that. And I, and I thought that was a great moment. So think about um, feedback. Are you raising impediments? I know that in Waterfall, one of the biggest lessons I used to coach my team on is if there is impediment or if there is a risk, you've got to raise it. It doesn't mean you've got to say the sky is falling, but you've got to come out and say it and have the courage to say it. And I would always tell them one thing. I will have your back as a manager, but you've got to raise it up and we can talk about it. So think about what your team could accomplish if everyone was truly open. Um, and and realise there is honesty and there is brutal honesty. Now, I come from a country where it's in our culture in Australia to be brutally honest. We just call it being direct. But we have to be careful with you know, how we form the message. But it's more important that we do make the message. So bring these things up. And I think if people were to converse more and be a little bit more forgiving when they receive feedback that is not so good, then I think we'd be in a better place. Courage. When I think about courage, I really think about um, your opportunity to learn. So to be courageous, try something new. It, it's okay to fail. It, it's trying to do something differently and knowing that it's okay to be courageous of it. Also raising impediments. Uh, Mr. Cotter was talking about that. It is difficult I see people, it's so difficult for people to actually have the courage to raise an impediment or to discuss that hard discussion that needs to, be, needs to happen with the team. Um, th that to me is being courageous. Just taking the leap of faith to do the hard thing that will benefit your team. And, and it's hard. It's hard to do. And I've seen it where people have difficulty doing it. But I'll tell you what, when they do it, it's so much better for the team to get that item out in the open, have that discussion, resolve the issue, and move forward so you can continue to improve as a team. My other son's going to be mad because I don't have any pictures of him. So this is Brandon. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, being, have, having courage with martial arts. We test in front of a live audience. I I've touched on it before. On the right, there's 15 to 20 other kids, his friends that he goes to school with. Uh, we have eighth degree master um, instructor there. We have a judging panel. We have all the parents. It's live. And you get three attempts to break, to break a board. And if you don't break the board, you don't move up to the next rank. Um, it's very specific. If you don't do that, you don't, you don't get through. So they're up there. Mr. Cotter talked about how to break the board. They, it is courageous. I mean, to get up there and do that in front of everybody. And then uh, this attempt here, he actually uh, did not break the board, not once, but not twice. So it's his third attempt. And everyone's watching him. And just to have the courage to go up there and actually break it the third time, it, it gives me shivers um, that he was actually had the courage to go up there and do it. There's some kids that, that don't do it. They, they don't even want to try after the first time, or they start crying. Um, it, it's hard for them to do. So having the courage to do it, and, and with martial arts, we, we teach them young and throughout to have the courage to do it. So try new things. I, I love this. First attempt in learning is fail. Um, just be courageous to do that. Embrace the failure, and we, I've heard this uh, yesterday as well. It's okay to fail. It's okay to try new things. Have the courage to raise the impediments. It's easy to say, hard to do, but once you, you're, one of your team members start doing it, the other team members will notice. And also somewhat with openness, these all intertwine, don't they? Really hard to have all to talk about these individually. 
but really give and receive the feedback. The team will improve as this happens, but you really need to get, uh, get started and have the courage to, to raise these discussions. So commitment. A black belt is a white belt that never gave up. This is a saying that we have on the wall of our Taekwondo school. And we have it there because we try to give encouragement to all the students. When you're a white belt, you look at all those belts, and it is kind of a little overwhelming. There are nine belts of different um, grades that are in the journey to get into the black belt. So commitment is very, very much a part of the discipline. And I think it is also part of the work we do uh, with our Agile teams. This um, particular uh, picture here is taken at a, uh, at a community event. Now my daughter, uh, that's her Cassie, uh, she's a purple belt. So purple belt, as you can see over here, it's about the sixth belt in, and that's, and that's the belt at which you're allowed to begin board breaking in our school. We don't allow um, students to break boards under the grade of purple belt because they just don't have enough experience or the right techniques and they, can, and they could actually get injured. This one here is interesting. She had the commitment and, uh, and that's, a, that's one of these boards. These are, these are not... Um, we have these other boards called demo boards. They're very flimsy and they, you see them in a lot of demonstrations in martial arts. These are the real, these are the real deal. Like these are very... Um, I normally break... Um, in my testing, I normally break two boards. It's about almost like the thickness of a door. Um, but she broke that one on the first hit, and she was very nervous. And, and all I said to her was my, words that are really around, you know, commitment and committing, committing to, the, to the board break. But it's also committing to the journey. So I think in the things we do in Agile, we should be committing to our ceremonies, committing to making these ceremonies really well, uh, well behaved for a start, but also very productive. And also commitment to the ceremonies of where they take us on the journey. So we have a ceremony, whether it's a stand-up meeting, whether it's a retrospective, or a sprint review, or a sprint planning, sprint planning meeting. We need to be committed to the quality of those sort of um, ceremonies and make sure that we try to improve those where possible. In martial arts, that's a lot of commitment. You have to go through all these belts, 310 form moves in total to get to black belt. Um, and the black belt, first degree is 81 moves, and with both second degree says 82 moves. The, uh, the commitment for us as instructors is that we have to know all these moves, for every single belt, which move, which technique, which direction, which variation of the move. And at any time in instructing, we have to say, or we are told, you have got the blue belts today, you've got the yellow belts, you've got the camo belts, whichever one, and know it and really teach it well. So the commitment for us is even an extra extension. And I think that in anything we do, home or work, uh, it's always going to build upon where you can commit. You want to do that one? Yeah. So this is me. Um, <laughs> I call this my Top Gun slide because I was inverted. <laughs> Top Gun reference, if you know Top Gun. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I did this. At, I was just showing off one day. I, I was looking at these. We have these um, various forms of gym equipment. And I looked at those rings and oh, I'll have a go at that. And uh, I thought for someone 55 years old, I was even too surprised to see if I could even pull myself up. And then I did that. Oh, that's not, not too bad for an old fella. But, um, but in martial arts, right, there are, these, are, these are kind of the rough stats. For 10,000 people that start a journey in martial arts, generally 5,000 give it away after six months because it's hard, they don't make enough time, they don't have the commitment. 1,000 after a year, you're down to 500 after two years. After three years, you may have 100 left. And this, and this is what, really what I've observed too. 10 out of that 10,000 will generally make the first degree black belt. It's a lot of commitment to getting to that level because it's years of training. Uh, one or two out of that 10 will make the second degree black belt. And I see a lot of um, first degrees that just don't come back. They say, well, I got two black belts and that was my thing. Well, we're nine degrees of black belt. Our, our, um, our senior chief uh, master instructor, uh, he's an eighth degree black belt. But he started when he was, I think, nine years old, and he's now 50, 56. Um, so even let's become instructors, that's where we come in. So think about what is your commitment level in terms of the things you do day to day, the things you do with each other day to day, and the things you do in the journey of Agile itself. We call it Agile transformation, we call it a path to agility, 
um, but it takes commitment to be on that path and to know that the path is continuous. Because you don't come into an agile space and say, I'm going to do agile from this to that and that's finished and I go home and we do something different. You have to commit to the journey of, of not just doing agile but being agile. So think about that and think about you know, your sprint goals. Um, I know Mr. Reid here has talked about that before, but what are the sprint goals that your team are going to achieve? And these are not necessarily goals around the product, but more about goals around how the team operates, observations you've made, things that you could do better. So think about those as you go into each sprint. So finally, yeah, another slide. Are you committed to your team? Are you committed to learning new things? Again, that lifelong learning uh, philosophy. And, and learning isn't really about learning just um, how to be agile either. There are a lot of things you can do in your life um, that make overall learning better. So exercise and all those things from this morning are good tips. And are you committed to the sprint goal? So commitment to the teams. There is no such thing as an in-between. You are either in or out. Um, this is a sporting reference. I'm not much of a sporting person myself, but I'm sure it's very important. I, I, just, I saw it on the internet. I just thought it was a really good quote. He's a basketball. Yes. There you go. Mr. Riley. <laughs> See him. Take a clue on American sports. All right, moving on. Last one. I was going to ask what the last one was, but respect. This is really how you talk to people, how you interact with people. It is, uh, what, what's the quote? Um, you don't, uh, oh shoot. Well, you earn respect. You earn respect. Um, it, it's how you interact with people. And it's very important, just a simple handshake, simple eye contact can definitely have an impact on how someone respects you, how, how much they respect you. And uh, building the basics of respect, the basis, it just allows everything else to happen. If you're respectful and your teammates are respectful, they work better together. And like I said, the other values also you know, improve. So I want to give, get you guys up. So. Stand up and find a partner. Do a demo. What's that? Yeah. We'll demonstrate. So what we what we need you to do if is you... we're going to do a martial arts, a very a very well known and very basic martial arts ceremony. Okay. So when we so when we greet each other in martial arts, we do a ceremony of bowing and handshaking as it's showing respect for each other. So in Korean, for Taekwondo, there is a, uh, a phrase, uh, two phrases, Triut Kenye, and what it means is, we'll demonstrate. Okay, we're going to talk through it though. So you so need to face your partner. Face find a partner. Okay, put your okay. feet together. Feet together. So that's Triut, coming up to attention. Nice up and straight. Yep. Okay. Now, Kenye, and bow. Put your hands together, and then you bow. Look, look at each other. Yep, come back up. Come back up. Now, you want to keep eye contact. Yep. All right, so we're going to try it again. All right, face the front. Face the front. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make me get into my instructor voice, okay? <laughs> All right, so feet together. Hands together. All right, Chuck Kane, you bow. All right, face your partner. Feet together, Chuck Kane. All right, very good. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Thank you. Oh, I didn't write down all the values. I didn't write down the values on the board. That's right. That's like the word. Okay. Thank you for participating. You're, you, you've been a great audience so far, so far. <laughs> so uh, that's one example of respect in, with, with our martial arts. But also, uh, this is uh, eighth, eighth degree black belt. He's the owner of our school, fifth degree master. And my 10 year old son. And once you become a black belt in our school, everyone is called by their last name. So. We have three Mr. Reeds in our school, uh, but this sh he 
everybody gives the same respect for everybody else in our school. And that's just the basis of martial arts, being very respectful. So regardless of who you are, you are Mr. At once you uh, attain black belt, doesn't matter what rank you are, you're, you're always Mr. Mr. Reed, Mr. Cotter. So uh, that's just one, in, uh, one instance of it. So who's a Blue Jackets fan? Or a hockey fan? So I saw this picture and I, I just thought, this, this is not martial arts related, I know, I know. However, these guys beat each other up for seven games. They fight, they, you know, you've seen, you've seen them on, on, on TV. So at the end of the series, they congratulate each other, good jobs. And I don't know, that's just, that's respect to me. You fight the person, you work, you know, you work against them, and then you, you, um, you show respect at the end. So does your team act respectfully? I've seen instances where people talk to others and I talk to them aside. You could have done that a little bit differently. A little bit more respectful would have gone a long way in that conversation. This one, do you respect that everyone is doing the best they can or are they just sitting there slacking off? Hopefully you work towards, or you work with the intent that they're doing the best they can. So be respectful towards that. And are you being authentic? People will see if you're not being authentic. And I think you lose some respect if you just be yourself, be authentic. And I think that helps with the respect. We are, we are almost at the board breaking. <laughs> all right. I know you've all stayed for the board break, so I really appreciate it. And hopefully you got something out of it, too. <clears throat> So the, the five values, in, in summary, we've gone through each of the values. Hopefully we've shown you uh, how they interact with martial arts and also think about what you can do with your teams. I think we're ready, Mr. Cotter. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to live these values. We're going we're gonna to use the values right here. Um, we've not done this in front of a live audience. so. We're gonna see how this goes. Courage. Courage. <laughs> Openness, I just, I just laid yes. that on the line. Yeah. Open to looking like a fool. <laughs> I was asked what happens if, if we don't, if we fail. Just a learning, learning experience. So, we're gonna go through, uh, Mr. Cotter's gonna do five board breaks in a row. I wish we had more holders because he could, we could do it a little bit quicker, but uh, that's what we're gonna do. You ready? Ready. Okay. So the first technique I'm going to show you, um, it's an upper body technique. Uh, it'll be a reverse elbow strike. This is where we use the fleshy part of our elbow. We move into the target and we strike it through the board. Okay, ready? Okay. Oh! Thank you. Uh, next one we're going to do, we'll do a, um, a front kick. Just a front kick with with shoes we don't usually use shoes let's see how this goes I can I can take them off <laughs> okay socks on a little slip okay. I'll right. come forward you know a little bit more you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take my sock off I'm gonna do a bare feet we're getting serious now so, show us the real deal <laughs> <laughs> we usually are, are bare we usually use uh our have bare feet okay ready yep hey! oh. <laughs> yeah he needs safety goggles <laughs> <laughs> <That's hard. laughs> so, as you can, so as you can imagine, that was the hardest kick I've felt. The uh, it's, a, it's it's just my foot going through. It's a, it's a hard board, and I normally do it with two boards. Okay, uh, next one we'll do is a uh, let's do a palm hill strike. Okay, so palm hill. We're using the palm the palm part of our heel. Uh, it's a little bit a little bit tricky because. If I strike it a little too low, I'm going to probably break those fingers. If I strike it here, I'm going to skid down my wrist and probably graze my wrist. So you don't want to do that. Ready? <laughs> you ready? Aye! Uh, next one, we'll, we'll do that side kick we saw before. Um, 
Actually, we'll still position when I do it right foot. Since I got my, since I got my bare foot on here. So same tip. Hey! How many was that? That was four. Four. Oh, yeah, one more. Man. I'm gonna change it up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Okay. Cotter is gonna attempt. Uh... So before we do this. Just, just so you know, you know, good friend to all martial artists is an ace bandage. <laughs> First aid tape. So when, I, when we, do, we do our strikes, we use the fleshy part of whatever limb we have to make contact with the board. The most unfleshiest part of a hand is your knuckles. You've probably got about one eighth of a layer of skin and then bone. And that's it. There's no protection. No, no protection. None of, when you see MMA fighters, they've got those gloves on and stuff. There's nothing like that. It's just bare knuckles through one inch of wood. Now, the last time I did this, I, get a, um, I did get a, a slight injury. I, I had an x-ray and it didn't, didn't actually break the hand. But my, <laughs> the funny thing is, my knuckle's actually a different shape than the other one now. <laughs> so. and, he, and he wants to do it again. That's yeah. a gr great idea. So, all right, you ready? Am I ready? Um, How do you want it? So straight like that. Okay. So this is the focus part. Be open to injury. <laughs> <laughs> Have courage to commit and do the commitment. Ready? Yep. Show the respect. And fire it off. Hey! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank How is it? We'll know in about an hour. Okay. <laughs> with, 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 with a little bit of ice and maybe some scotch in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, what I'd like to do is, for each of the five values, I, I was going to write on the boards and I forgot. So for each of the five values, we're going to have five boards here. And I am going to break all five. But you have to give us a minute. So Mr. Cotter tried to one-up me. I'm going to... I have actually done five. Do you think I should try five today or six? <laughs> <laughs> There's always one. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. There you go. <laughs> That's a good thing about living in Ohio. There's like medical centers everywhere. I, I'm one per every five people. It's incredible. All right. Okay. Who asked that? So I was going to do the five. Who, who asked? Okay. I was going to do five for the five values for the first time in front of a live audience and the first time for me. And uh, I already did it. We did a video of it, so I actually did five. So um, just try something new and try with six. So five values plus empiricism. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the foundational one. I want to get this one fixed. Can you help me? Yep. Oh, this one here. Let's fix this one. Oh, spicer. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm more nervous about this than doing the whole talk. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right, ready? Yep. <clears throat> you got this. Four. Yeah. 
four. Not bad, not bad. Or yeah, five. Yeah, five. Yeah, five. Yeah, five. Yeah. That would be a gross opportunity. Sure, sure. That's it. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. I'm going home and trying that again. <laughs> All right. Oh, so uh, at AAP, we were not able to uh, attempt the board break, so uh, we put a couple of videos in there, but we're going to skip them. You want to see the five that I actually got? Yeah. All right. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. How much time? Okay. So, so just winding up again, um, the values are important. Um, these are life values as well as agile values. Again, think about how we want to make the values connect and values to be staying with us and enacted. Learn what you can, practice the values as much as you can, and help others to learn how to practice. Try to make the, the values habit forming. Um, so today, for example, that presentation this morning, I was very taken by the, the focus on the mobile phone at the table picture. I thought that really resonated with me. And um, I find myself with my kids, we'll go to a table and they get the, they get the phones out and I'm doing the same thing. And it's actually my daughter a few times says, okay, enough, put the devices away. And I'm almost, in my head, I'm thinking, oh, just one more, one more thing I've got to do. But she's already started to form the habit and she's a teenager. And she's, she's, a, she's a teenager with a black belt. But way of life, <laughs> um, you know, try to make the things a way of life. If you don't make it a way of life, it, you're not going to fail, but it means that it just makes it more of an effort. And I think in relationships and in, in, in these values, if you make them a way of life, I think they just become easier to do. And then once you do that, you find areas to improve upon yourself, and that's where you go back to learning again. So I really like that. Yep. All right. So who wants a super, what is it, Power Ranger team, like super Power Ranger team? All right. So what can we do? One thing you can do with focus, you can take away, is put up a chart or put up a piece of paper and every time your team gets distracted, every time they lose focus for whatever reason, just mark it down. And then your retrospectives, take a quick look and see how many distractions or how many loss of focus your team has over, the, over your sprint. And uh, talk about it. What can you do to remove them? Oh, so openness, be open with your team, open with yourselves. Um, give and receive constructive feedback. Gets back to the point I was making earlier about don't try to not be brutal, but try to be constructive and also be ready to receive feedback yourself. Courage, be okay trying something new. Instill that in your teams. It's okay to fail. Try something new. And to do the right thing, even though it may be hard. Raise that impediment. Have that discussion with your teammates. It's only going to make your team better. And commitment. So commit to your team. Commit to do what it takes. Um, and commit to do what it takes to complete the sprint goal. I can't say that enough, but I think that commitment is very, very important. Um, and it's also really what a, what a journey value is about. If you have continued commitment, then that journey is going to be much more successful. And really treat people with respect, and you will, earn your, you will earn their respect. And it just steamrolls. It'll continue. OK, I wanted to kind of, I know which one I would choose here. But real quick, audience poll. Who think, which one is more important for a team? Give you a moment to think about that. OK, raise of hands. 
Focus, who thinks focus is the most important? This is like stack, stack, stack ranking the, the agile principles, right? Okay, openness. I have a few. Yep. Courage. Half. It, it's either up or down. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> Commitment. Okay. And respect. Wow. Wow. That's overwhelming. That's Respect, by far. That wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. So for me, I mean, they all have value, of course. But uh, for me, it was courage. I think courage ties in with, to the other, and they all tie together. But to be courage about staying focused, to be courageous about having those discussions, being open. It, it all ties together, but uh, it was interesting. Respect was by far the most important. Okay, has anyone seen Meet, Meet the Fockers? <laughs> okay, if you're having trouble remembering the five values, Fokker. His, his words, not mine. You, you don't hear me said my accent. Now. <laughs> You must be careful with this, uh, with this okay? <laughs> Pronounce it. Uh, but now you'll remember them, I think. <laughs> Fokker. <clears throat> okay. One last thing. Everyone have a pen and paper? All right, in your mind or on pen or paper. You have... 30 seconds, write down the five values. Go. I just gave them to you. <laughs> All right, I don't have a watch. Thumbs up. Okay. So, how many? Hmm. Did everyone get all five? Did anyone not get five? Oh, come on. Have some courage. <laughs> all right. You don't have to raise your hands. However, if you don't know the five values, how can your teams, or you or your teams, embrace the five values? So, please. Fokker, <laughs> whatever you need to take, whatever it takes, learn, know the five values, get your teams to know the five values, and work on them, and embrace them. So, thank you very much. And, and, uh, and, and before you go, uh, let's not forget, there is, uh, there is a survey um, for feedback. Uh, we are second degree black belt, so be nice. <laughs> okay. But honestly, yeah, it'd be good to have some feedback. And we are developing we have, this talk further, so any feedback is definitely welcome. And we have two funny videos if you'd like to see them. Bloopers, blooper reels. All right, uh, uh, questions, any questions for us? Yeah, they know it all now, it's fun. <laughs> all right. Noodle board break. Noodle board break. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Master Ellis said, we could do that. We could actually break a board with a noodle, with a pool noodle. So next time I went to class, we tried it. You cannot break a board <laughs> with a pool. He, he went at it like you wouldn't believe. Um, the board didn't break. So, just so you guys know. <clears throat> and finally... This is great. <laughs> this is great. Oh. I didn't break it. <laughs> I was too far. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.
All right, that's it. <laughs> I have more, but uh, appreciate it. Have a good conference.